Good evening, everybody, and it's great to see such a, a good crowd on tonight. So I'm going to go back to the start of this presentation. That was the first thing. So I'm going to talk about sex semen, a um, little bit about, about the science behind it and, and why, why it's a little bit different. And then we'll, we'll speak about some of the advice and about stacking the odds really in, in your favour as regards um, getting the, the best possible results from it. So I'm going to draw your attention here to, the, to my little infographic here on the right um, for a start and go back to a little bit of school biology. So on the right here, you can see my pointer there, John. Can you, you can see the, the mouse? Yeah. So, um, so this, is a, this is the egg here on the right. So we're going to talk about the sperm and the egg. So this is the egg. And the egg carries an X, X chromosome. And then sperm cells, they can either 50-50, they can either carry the X chromosome or the Y chromosome. So if a Y chromosome fertilizes the Y sperm or a female or a, a Y chromosome sperm fertilizes the egg, you're going to get a male calf. And if an X chromosome uh, sperm fertilizes the egg, you're going to get a female calf. So the whole thing with sex semen is the technology is able to sort the semen um, with 90% accuracy. So you can see your 10 sperm cells here, nine of them are X. So they're going to have a, they're going to produce a female calf and you have one Y floating around here. So that's the 90% purity. Um, so you're really, you're really, I suppose, you're, going to, you're, you're, you're changing biology, but you're going to get, the, the odds are 90% chance that you're going to get a female calf. And I'll talk a little bit more about it later on, but the basis behind this technology is there's a, a picture here of an X chromosome and a Y chromosome at the bottom. So the X is slightly bigger and carries 5% um, more DNA, and that allows the, the technology to actually differentiate between the X and the Y chromosome. So we'll come back to that as we go along. So I suppose, why, why use sex semen and what are the advantages? So the big one from a dairy point of view is you can breed replacements from your better cows and your better heifers. Um, and if you're going to do that, you're going to be more selective about your breeding and you're going to increase your genetic gain. So if you look at it, the conventional semen, you're going to need four to four and a half straws um, to produce a heifer. Uh, with sex semen, depending on the fertility of the herd, whether it's heifers or cows you're using it on, you're going to need two to two and a half straws to produce a heifer. So because you're using less straws, it allows you to be more selective. Uh, and then obviously by doing that, if 90% of the calves born to sex semen are going to be female, you're going to reduce the dairy male calf being born on the farm. Um, and then the other big advantage is because you're, use, you're, you're breeding your replacements from fewer cows, you're able to use more beef semen from the start. So you're going to increase the value of your non-replacement calf crops, so your beef calves. And you can really use a selection of sires from the start, whether it's Charlie, Limousine, Belgian Blue, and more the, the traditional breeds like Angus and Herefords. So a more saleable, more attractive beef calf crop. And then because you're using your uh, replacement sex straws early in the breeding season, you're going to end up with your replacements born more compactly, more compactly. And this is really attractive. It makes management easier. So you have a nice compact bunch of heifer calves. They're going to be easier managed. They're going to be um, easier to get up to the target weight the following breeding season and hopefully um, ready for sex even again the following year. But I suppose the but, um, the but is that we need to maintain a high six-week calving rate. And we know from trial work here in Ireland and in Moore Park with uh, Stephen Butler that all things being equal, sex semen, the relative conception rate in, in um, a couple of trials in the last number of years was about 80%. So, but I think, and I'm going to talk a good bit about it, that if we can stack the odds in the favour of sex semen, we can actually close that gap and, and actually maintain our six week calving rate. And I suppose why did just briefly, why is the six week calving rate so important? So our whole competitive advantage in Ireland really is our ability to make use of the graze grass. And to do that, we need to calve compactly in the spring and get our long days of grass and match our, um, our herd's feed requirement to pasture growth. So that means calving compactly in the spring. And that means calve, conceiving having a compact breeding season and cows going calf compactly. So look, if a, calf, a cow calves in mid-February, and she's dried off before Christmas in mid-December. She's going to get her full lactation of 305 days. If she's calving mid-April, you're knocking 60 days off that lactation if she's, if she's going to be dried off in mid-December. So our six-week calving rate, um, we, have to, we have to maintain that. So this is a picture then um, 
of the Sex Seaman Lab up in up in NCBC. So um, and NCBC is, is owned by suppose by Progressive Genetics and Monster Bovin. So last year, Sexing Technologies set up a lab in Moor Park, um, and the product last year was Sex Ultra 4M. So I suppose this year, with the growing demand for Sex Seaman, um, we actually opened our own lab up in NCBC. So it's run by the same company, Sexing Technologies. So it's the same uh, same company run both labs. And the name of the product this year is Sex Ultra Plus. So the plus means that, um, well, it, it, I suppose that the name of the product, you can actually get 2 million, 3 million or 4 million cells in the straw, depending on what you order. And I suppose the big thing with Monster this year is we um, we took the decision that every straw actually would have 4 million sperm cells in the straw. So if I, I'll just talk you through the, these uh, these couple of pictures. So this is a picture of one of the sexing machines. So there's 15 of these above in the lab up in NCBC. Um, so if we look on the left here, that the little vial here is the is the ejaculate, and you can see the color that the, the dye is in it. So the dye actually uh, is taken up by the DNA inside in the sperm cells. And as I mentioned before in the first slide, the X chromosome, so the female sperm cell, takes up more dye. And that allows the computer then to identify the male versus the female sperm cell. So then it goes through this thing called a flow cytometer that lines up the sperm cells uh, in a line and they pass down, uh, pass the, la the laser and the technology is able to put a charge depending on whether it identifies it as male or female, it puts a charge on the cell. And if we go over here to the right, then um, the best way to describe this is like a drafting gate at the bottom. Uh, so there's a charge on these plates. So in this scenario, the charge is turned on here on the plate on the left, and it's actually pulling the, the, the little line, you can't really see it there, of female sorted sperm cells into this file here. So it's hard to believe, but there's over 30,000 sperm cells per second past the laser, and it's able to pick them off and put a charge in them. So uh, it takes 30 seconds to make about a million cells, a minute to make 2 million, and two minutes to make 4 million. Um, so, and I suppose the big thing as regards stacking the odds in your favor, um, one big thing is we, we, the decision to put the 4 million cells in the straw. So it obviously is a bit more expensive and it takes a bit more time, but we do prioritize fertility just as much as genetics. Um, and the other thing Fina mentioned it already is we just sex bulls that are above average with their conception rate. And the other thing is we don't sex the G1 bulls. So the young G G1 bulls that Fina spoke about there, um, we don't sex those bulls because we don't have any information about their ability to put cows in calf. Um, so that's the technology. Um, so look, I'll just go back to the slide actually. So I suppose the best way to this, there's, there's a couple of things about this then. So this, this whole process takes about eight hours. So that is, a, there's a little bit of stress involved there on the sperm cells because they're, they're in that file, they're going through the machine for eight hours. Um, but the other thing that happens then, because they're in this special medium, which is mimics the uterus of the cow, they actually go through this process called capacitation. So capacitation is a process sperm cells have to go through to actually be able to fertilize the egg. Um, so they have gone through that. So they're actually ready to go. So conventional sperm, when conventional semen goes into the cow, um, it takes about eight hours for it to capacitate before it can fertilize the egg. Whereas sex semen is actually after going through that, um, and it's ready to go straight away. So the best way I think to, to think about it, it's like a professional hurler or hurlers or footballers or rugby players, they do a warm up. So the sex semen is doing a warm up, but it's doing quite a long warm up. Um, so it is ready to go. It's going to play a great first half, but it's probably going to run out of steam a bit for the second half. Whereas conventional semen. Uh, is, is this car hurling you're talking about now, Dennis, is it? Uh, well, it didn't kick any hurling last Sunday anyway, John, we're talking about. But, uh, I was talking about last Sunday, two weeks, and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so look, they're, they're after going through that warm-up, they're ready to go, but they've probably done a bit too long of a warm-up, to be honest. Um, so they're going to run out of steam a little quicker. And that really comes into a play then when we're talking about the timing. So I'm going to talk about three things here, really, then. Um, when it comes to stacking the odds in your favor then as regards what you're doing as, as the as the herd owner so i suppose the first thing is because it's it's um it's a bit more fragile the, the sex product we need to be a bit more careful about how we handle it so that goes right through from all the semen handling making sure it's uh, it's under liquid nitrogen 
But then when you're actually going to use it, um, it needs to be thawed in a descale flask. So, um, so that's a big thing for any DIY customers out there to, 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 get, a, to get some uh, descaler products, the likes of ICAL, descale your thawing flask, give it a good rinse out. So we know that lime scale harbors bacteria and we don't want that. Um, and then cool boiled water to change the water every day inside in the flask. And then you want to fast thawing. So make sure the temperature is right. And make sure you have a thermometer to make sure that the, the flask is doing its job correctly. You want it at 35 to 37 degrees and then for a minimum of 45 seconds. So straight out of the, of the, um, from the liquid nitrogen, straight into the, the thawing flask. And we want fast thawing for, for a minimum of 45 seconds. We want to bring as many of them back to life as possible. The next thing then is have your gun pre-warmed um, and dry your straw, load it up, and then keep it warm, keep it down your back um, until, it get, until you get to the cow. And then really you want, it's different to conventional semen, you want it inside the cow within five minutes and really um, concentrate on the placement and the hygiene getting into the cow. I suppose, look, a word about our own, our own team of 160 Munster bovine technicians. Um, obviously, they're well-versed in, in, in semen handling and especially sex semen handling, um, and they do a super job. And look, we, we know, or I know from the figures anyway, that they do really inject fertility with their high conception rate into the herds that they're working in. So that's the semen handling and the insemination part. So hygiene, um, making sure the semen is taught out correctly and into the cow quickly. And maintain the temperature until you get into the cow uh, hygiene and good good semen placement inside the cow. I suppose then it's like in pint, if you go back there in pint three, you know, if you're in a habit of loading the gun with your conventional semen and then you're going into the ring or into the yard and you're throwing the cows into the crush, then mm. if that game is over. You have to have the cows in the crush before you have the seam, get the semen mm -hmm. ready, really. I think when you're like your DIY. You're right, John, our technician, your cow needs to be ready. Um, so if the technician is coming in and he's going to tow two straws, make sure the two cows are in the crush and he can, he can AI you them can't, quickly. You can't spend two minutes chasing the cow around the yard, can you? No. And if you're DIY, sex. make sure your two cows are in, you haven't identified, or one or two cows, whichever you're comfortable with. Um, you want to get the straw in as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, so the next thing then is cow and heifer selection and management. So... As, like it's all about stacking the odds in our favor here. Um, but from our side as an AI company, which you know, making sure we're, we have the best product possible. Um, but then from your side, um, you want to select healthy, fertile cows. So there's a few little guides here then. So the first thing is that they're calved long enough. So you want them calved a minimum of six, six, 50 days and ideally 60 days. So you're talking really about February calved cows. So I suppose the higher your six week calving rate is, the more cows that are actually going to be calved long enough to take sex semen. So you want them cycling regularly. So if you're doing a bit of heat detection or you have the technology, brilliant, but you'd like that they're after, that they're actually cycling regularly. Younger cows we know are more fertile. So your first to fourth lactation cows generally have a higher conception rate. But I would say um, just watch the heifers. It has been, um, you know, heifers can struggle a bit this time of year, especially with the weather now the last couple of weeks. So watch those heifers that they've... Um, maybe avoid the ones that haven't caught it off or are struggling a little bit for body condition. And then body condition is critical. So um, we're talking three plus here. So cows that are in nice condition. Um, so calve long enough, healthy and in nice condition. And then that they've had no problems at calving. So no difficult calving, no retained afterbirth and no issues since calving like lameness or mastitis. And the big thing then is that to um, make sure the nutrition is right, coming up to breeding and during the breeding season. And a great indicator there is watch the volume in the bull tank and watch the percentage protein um, and make sure that you're getting the nutrition right. As regards the heifers, then, the big thing with the heifers really is that they're above target weight uh, and cycling regularly. So heifers, if they're on their second or even more, the third cycle, they're going to be more fertile. And if they're, what really dictates how early they're going to start cycling is if they're, if they're on target weight. So I think a great bit of advice at the moment, John, would be actually to go away and weigh your heifers. If you're using sex semen, now, even now is a good time to weigh your heifers. And if you're 20, 20 days away from breeding and they're going to go out to grass, they're probably going to put on a kilo a day. And I see a question in there in the chat already, actually, about um, the maintenance, just to go through the maintenance. So I think now is a good time to maybe look at it. So and Fina has touched on it, um, going through the panels. 
but this this is a, a table here with the maintenance figure, uh, the mature live weight of the cow, and then the target weight at breeding for the heifer. So if we look at the uh, typical maintenance there of about 10, that gives a, a mature weight of about 590. And the target weight for, for those heifers is about is over 350. And that's a minimum weight, it's not an average weight. So I think there's always go on, John. Yeah, no, I was just about to say, like the, the averages is what kill you because say if you're an average mate, say if your average weight there of five hundred and sixty eight kilos cow, right? Mm. But you have some cows at six sixteen and some there at five twenty. No, oh, that's a massive range. And then you might say to you, sure, my heifers on average are weighing three hundred and forty kilos. So on average they're grand. Mm. But your averages will kill you. It'd be like one hand in the fire and the other hand in the freezer. And you're kind of saying, sure, on average, I'm okay. But <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You know, all heifers would have to be on target. Yeah. I was just talking to a man today, actually, and he actually went away and weighed the heifers. Uh, I was chatting with him today and picked out, he did it about two or three weeks ago, actually, picked out the ones that are a bit light, um, separated them and started feeding them. So even now, it's not, it's not too late um, to take action on those. And maybe if they're just struggling for target weight and you were planning to use sex semen, uh, maybe avoid it in, in those in the couple that are actually struggling for weight. Still breed them, but maybe they're not the best candidates for sex semen. So I hope that explains the maintenance value there. Um, but the critical message I want to get here really is, the, is to make sure your heifers are on target weight. Um, and the third big thing then is the timing of AI. So um, <clears throat> I suppose this is a little graph at the start here. So we have to start the standing heat. So the cow is starting to stand. And about 28 hours after that, um, on average, the ovulation happens. So with conventional semen, um, we can go anywhere here from the start of standing heat all the way up to 12 hours after the end of standing heat. We take it that the standing heat lasts about eight hours. So conventional semen is going to last inside in the cow. Um, but remember, it's if we go too late, it hasn't gone through that, that process of capacitation. So um, anything after that 12 hours, really, our conception rates can drop. Sex semen then, so it's after, it's, it's warm up, so it is ready to go. Um, and But it's after a long warm up, so it, it might run out of steam. So that means that we want to go a bit later. So the, the guidelines at the moment are 14 to 20 hours after the start of standing heat. But I think in reality, if the product is very good, and even some of the, re the research coming with the, the sync programs and stuff now, that we're probably talking, you know, a bit earlier than that, maybe 10 or 12 hours, and probably slightly later than the, than the 20 hours. So in essence, what it means is we want to, we don't want to AI any fresh cows with sex semen. And so if it will say, if your technician is coming in at 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning, um, we'll say cows from noon the previous day that have started standing, 11 o'clock, 11 to 12 o'clock the previous day, right up to dusk that night. So cows that were in standing heat the previous day really are suitable for sex semen the following morning. Well, it's not going to last as long, so we need the timing to be closer and it's already gone through that capacitation so we can actually take advantage of that and inseminate a little, a little closer to, um, to the time of ovulation. So then I suppose that brings me to synchronization and some of those modern protocols and the big advantage with synchronization and i'll just go through some of the, the a couple of the protocols is it actually overcomes this issue with timing of ai um so there's a couple of protocols up here and there's slight variations available now just to suit sex semen so if we look at this 10-day protocol for heifers and these are up on our website and, and they're up on our breeding fertility notes um and chat to your, your vet about them but for that 10 day protocol with the two shots of GNRH and the two shots of PG for cows. So they're getting their, their GNRH the night before at around 5 p.m. For conventional semen, the guideline is, is nine to one o'clock the following day. But for sex semen, the guideline is to go that little bit later. So 19 to 22 hours. So you're talking 12 o'clock to three o'clock, which is an advantage. I think if you're doing a bunch of cows for sex, um, your technician is probably going to have more time around that time of day to come back and actually spend spend the time to do that, that bunch of cows. So that is that is an option if you want to use synchronization to do a bunch of cows. For the heifers, then there's been some great uh, research done in Moor Park or in the, in the Tagish farms the last couple of years. Um, and looking at that eight day program, so that eight day fixed time AI program, it's well well proven at this stage. But what they actually did was 
delayed the time of insemination by eight hours for six semen. So with, with half the heifers, um, they actually brought them in in the morning for the treatment, kind of around 9 a.m. on day five and day six for their PG and taking out the, the printer to see on day six. And on day eight, then they came in in the morning, 9 a.m. for their shot of GNRH. So with the standard protocol, they would have gotten inseminated at this time. So they divided the heifers in half and half of them got inseminated in the, in the morning here at nine o'clock with the shot of GNRH. And the other half of them got, they, they delayed the insemination by eight hours and they actually got a 9% improvement in conception rate by delaying the time of insemination. So that kind of proves the point about the, the capacitation um, that you can actually go a nice bit closer with the... With Dennis, the Dennis, for the rest of us mere mortals here on the webinar, what's that, that big word there, Cap? What's that one? Oh, capacitation. So that's... So that's, that's, that's the semen is just waking up. It wakes up faster, so it kind of has to be... So it takes about eight hours. So when eventually the semen goes into the cow, John, it has to... It can swim away, away up to the ovaries, no bother, but it has to go through this uh, maturation process, which gets it ready to actually fertilize the egg. And that takes about eight hours. So conventional semen has to do that in the cow, or even if a natural service with a bull, it has to, has to happen inside in the cow. But with sex semen, because it's in this special medium and the process takes about eight hours, um, it actually happens in, in the laboratory um, while the semen has been sexed. So that means when sex semen goes into the cow, it's it's ready to go. Well, once it gets up there, it's ready to fertilize, which means we can go a that bit later with our time of AI. I never describe you as a mere mortal, John. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Fair enough. Um, just, just go back on that last slide there, because I, I had this yesterday. It was at a signpost event yesterday. Um, like... Say when you look at the sex semen there and you have the base in the red box and it's between 19 and 22 hours, you know, like you're saying really it's at 21, say 20 hours or 20 yeah. and a half hours. It's a, it, you're, you're kind of being a bit loose. You can go left or right of that. But when you look at that sex semen, you have down there eight hours. You have to be fairly exact in that. There's no real going two hours left or right of that eight hours if you want the best results. Oh, yeah. Well, I would say, look, four to six, but there, there is a little bit of leeway. So if it's eight, Eight hours you're talking, you know, they can't all be inseminated at just exactly the same time. They can't all be injected at, at exactly the same time. But I gave, the, there's a window here as well. I don't, I don't have it down there now, but you're talking four o'clock to six o'clock, you know, that window. Yeah. But if you're window. saying, if you're doing maybe a hundred heifers, and we'd have cases where lads are doing fixed time AI in under heifers, depending on the facilities and the amount of technicians available or, or you have on that job or if it's DIY, yeah. you want to split that into two days maybe because you're, you're yeah, your window. Suppose, you're right. It depends on facilities and it depends on technician power. And I suppose, look, we're lucky that um, generally the, the, the technicians, they team up depending on the size of the job. So if that talk about that 100 heifers, um, generally, you know, the technician that usually works at the farm, he'll probably call a couple of buddies and maybe three of them will attack the job, you know, so and they can rotate in and out, loading guns and, and inseminating. And that's I suppose the big thing there is it can be done. It can actually be done in the window. So um, I suppose dividing the heifers adds complication. It's, it's probably easier to manage them as the batch um, within reason, John. And hopefully the technician power and the organization is there and the herd owner as regards to facility, facilities and maybe um, dividing out the heifers by what bull they're getting as well. So if you're going to go do a big sink job, whether it's heifers or cows, Make sure you um, have the power there to do it. Plan and have planning, the power to pull it off. Planning is absolutely critical. So the, the first part of that planning is, you know, is probably contacting your technician and starting with the end in mind, you know, and seeing is, is the technician power available at the end, working back then on the sync protocol. Um, and something we probably didn't mention then is, is having the team of bulls, you know, I would say for that bunch of 100 heifers, you're, you're talking a minimum of five bulls anyway. And... What's extremely helpful then if you can divide out the heifers, if possible, by bull, and it just streamlines the whole thing and allows the insemination to be done more efficiently and, and quicker, which is what you want. Just one other thing then about, because um, I had a couple of phone calls today from, from technicians um, about uh, prids or cedars after going in or the, the progesterone device gone in. They were taken out yesterday and today uh, in a couple of bunches of heifers and about half of them were after being pulled out. So whether the strings weren't cut, but just make sure in heifers to cut those strings because there's nothing more frustrating than 
you go and take it out the cedars or the prids on day six and a half are missing because they're after pulling them out. So make sure that the strings and the, the cards are cut. Um, so then this is the last slide, John. So look, sex semen, there's huge potential benefits. We went through them at the start from the more selective breeding. So breeding off your better cows and heifers, um, having your heifers, calves born compactly at the start you know, being able to use more beef AI, increasing the value and the attractiveness of your calf crop. So there's huge benefits. But the big thing is we must we must maintain this high six-week calving rate. And I suppose from our side of the house, you know, um, we have a great uh, technician team that have, you know, proven high conception rates. We're putting 4 million cells in the straws, in all the straws produced in Moorpark and above an NCBC. You know, and we're picking the bulls, the, the, the above average fertility bulls and avoiding the G1 bulls. So that's, I suppose, our part. We're trying to really stack the odds uh, in your favour. And then from the herd owner point of view, if you're DIY, it is all about the semen handling, the AI procedure, selecting those, make sure, making sure those heifers are above target weight, selecting the cows like we spoke about, calf long enough, body condition score, healthy, cycling regularly, having nutrition right, and then the third final bit at the, is, is the heat detection. So making sure, firstly, that the cow is actually, or the heifer is actually in heat, uh, and then getting the timing right. So avoiding fresh cows or heifers and really um, AI and cows that are gone, gone off heat. And we just spoke about the role of synchronization that can play there. So it's another thing, John, is to select enough cows. So like this thing of maybe having 20 straws and selecting 20 cows, not that cow may not be, the cows you want may not, the timing may not yeah. be right. So select, select enough cows. So if you're 20 straws, select 30 or 40 cows and make sure the timing is right because the most important thing is you want to get a pregnancy. Um, oh, from, how would you do that, Dennis? How, how would you pick the cows? What's your uh, what's your criteria? How do you work out? Look, I suppose the first thing is you have to go through the criteria as regards their fertility, you know, that they're calved long enough, um, that they've had no issues, their body condition. So that's that's your first part. And after that, then you're looking at the genetics and their production. So look at their genetics, their EBI, um, and look at go, go to the milk recording and avoid avoid the worst of them, avoid the ones that are red in the milk recording either in the lifetime or the year to date. And so I think if you do that much, you're prioritizing actually getting them in calf, but you're also driving on the genetic gain as well. Um, the other thing then is we want to use it early in the season, so we don't want to be using it. Um, you know, three, four weeks into the breeding season, we want to try and get it used in the first couple of weeks. And I was, I would say then for 2023, there's plenty of herd owners probably on that used it last year and hopefully got on well. And the feedback last year is that people did get on well. And a lot of people that really followed the advice and followed those criteria actually achieved parity between sexed and conventional. So by stacking the odds in the favour of the cows and heifers that were getting sexed, they actually ended up with the same conception rate with sexed and conventional. So it is possible to, to bridge that gap. Um, so the big thing this year, if you got on well last year, do the same thing this year. So sometimes success can lead to a bit of complacency. So make sure that you're doing the very same thing as you did last year as regards following the advice. And if you haven't used it, if it's your first year um, and, you're, and you're on the fence, I definitely, it's a bit like selective dry cut therapy, start small. I definitely consider using ten or twenty straws or ten or twenty percent of the of the herd to get to get a sex straw. Um, follow the, the criteria, give it your best shot. Um, hopefully, and and the feedback is that people got on well last year. So, and if you get on well with a small number, that builds confidence to to use a bit more maybe into the future. It um, does, yeah. And, and the lowest then is uh, you know let you ease yourself into it and let you know what you're getting yourself into and then. They, to an extent, because, you know, you have to watch the, the heat detection a bit more careful. You have to get your time in of it, of putting in the semen a bit more. You have to get a bit more accurate. Like, it's, there's a bit of learning to it as well. Like, so I think that piece of try a bit and see how you get on here. Hey? I, I think, think so. it's worked really well in the past. Yeah, it has. Yeah. So look, I think the, the confidence is there, but you need to build your own skill set. If this is your first year using it, you know, build your own skill set first to make sure that you're, that you can actually select those cows and you can get the timing right and all the rest. Um, so Fina mentioned, I suppose, the downloads. So this is our breeding fertility management. So there's a lot of information in that about um, managing, you know, preparing for the breeding season. A couple of pages on it and sex semen, managing your heifers, the sync programs are there in the back of it. 
Um, so that's available to download and is probably available through your, your technician or your breeding advisor as well. They should have them, have them in the cars. So that's me, John. Uh, those slides you had there to show the timings of um, fixed time AI, they're, they're on the back page of that, of that um, brochure as well, aren't they? They are. So there's actually four programs in the back. Uh, there's, there's two for conventional, uh, one for cows, one for heifers, and two for sexed, one for cows, one for heifers. Yeah, so we actually yeah. broke them down by depending on what you're using. 